Good morning. It's Friday, April 8th, 2016. I'm Candace Red, and of course, I have the latest information on House Bill 1523. I know that's what everyone is talking about and what it could mean for the state of Mississippi. But first, let's talk about the weather with meteorologist Riley Hale. Riley, how's it looking today? Good out there. A little bit chilly. We're dropping down to the upper 40s, so that's what we were calling for yesterday. Clear skies overnight, and we actually had a new moon, so perfect night to go check out those stars. No light pollution from the moon tonight and then north west northeasterly winds right now but we should start to see more of a northwesterly wind by today and that's going to keep our temperatures slightly on the cooler side not quite as warm as yesterday we should stay into the upper 60s across the area and it's going to be another windy day we'll see sustained winds around 5 to 15 miles an hour but the weekend's looking a little bit better, but Sunday we could have a little bump in the forecast, but I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Mississippi is facing a corporate backlash thanks to House Bill 1523, while executives from several businesses, including General Electric and Pepsi, sent a letter to Mississippi Governor Phil Bryant condemning the religious freedom law as discriminatory. While well, Mississippi joins North Carolina in allowing businesses and government to deny service to lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people based on their personal religious beliefs. Well, as Mark Strassman shows us, it's still unclear what effect if any, the corporate backlash will have. I'm here to sell cake, not to judge who to sell it to. In Jackson, Mississippi, Mitchell Moore owns Campbell's Bakery. This Republican says the state's religious freedom law is bad for business. We now have a target on our back and, uh, and we are going to have to explain to our customers, no, no, we don't agree with the bill. And major corporations agree. On Wednesday, nine of them, including General Electric and Hyatt Hotels, sent a letter to Mississippi Governor Phil Bryant saying they are disappointed to see the legislature and governor's office pass discriminatory legislation. After weeks of protest, Governor Bryant signed the bill into law on Tuesday, allowing businesses and government to deny services to LGBT individuals based on personal religious beliefs. A recent poll indicated nearly two-thirds of Mississippians support the new law, but that isn't stopping national brands from trying to intervene. We've seen with companies that actually go farther and give their message teeth by saying they're going to do something to pull out of the state or cancel projects. One of those businesses is PayPal. On Tuesday, the company announced it would pull more than 400 jobs from North Carolina after that state passed similar legislation to Mississippi's. Most LGBT activists and groups are really happy to see that this is being taken up as a mantle of the business community, but it's not measurably clear how much of an impact that's going to have. Mark Strassman, CBS News, Atlanta. House Bill 1523 is pushing residents in the city of Natchez out of Mississippi. Well, many believe the state will again be on the wrong side of history. Residents actually started a petition to secede from the Magnolia State and join good old Louisiana. Reporter Elizabeth Vobo has the story. The city of Natchez may have been carved out of Mississippi mud, but its spirit is made of the same stuff you'll find in New Orleans. Rabid, Tiger, and Saints fans. A rich history tied to the black water flowing by the city. And a belief that being a little different never hurt anyone. The people here uh, enjoy uh, having fun and relaxing and dancing to the beat of their own drums. Tourists come from near and far to visit the city's antebellum homes, restaurants, and historic sites. Many of those passing through are welcomed by Chef Regina Charbonneau. With a home open for tours in the spring and a restaurant in the oldest building in town, she has a knack for bringing people together over some good food. We're all about hospitality and opening and hospitality to everyone. We don't shut people out. And I think that's what's been painful about the governor signing this. Mississippi legislators passed a law that allows businesses to refuse service or fire employees based on religious beliefs. The Mississippi governor says it protects religious freedom. Critics say it legalizes discrimination against the LGBT community. Either way, the new law left many folks in the Little Easy feeling very uneasy. 
WTF? I mean, can I say that? I mean, like, what in the world? Where's this coming from? Who are those people? I don't know them. The issue caught the eye of Natchez native Patrick Mulhern, having himself defected to Baton Rouge more than two decades ago. He offered a solution for his hometown. He penned a letter to the local paper, formally inviting the city to join Louisiana. We felt like, uh, you know, we need to get the message out that Natchez kind of wants to distance itself from the rest of Mississippi. The note was meant to be a little satire, a joke on April Fool's Day, but his words struck a chord, and by the end of the day, a petition to secede from Mississippi was making its rounds online, gaining more than 700 signatures. It's fantastic that Natchez gets it. I mean, they want to send the message to the world that, you know, please don't lump us in with everybody else. The petition has been the talk of the town. You know, I hadn't heard any comment that Louisiana would be interested in uh, having us. And while Natchez isn't likely to start flying a pelican anytime soon, the message is clear. People are welcome here, and if the governor of Louisiana wants us, well, come on over. A man connected to a shooting is waiting for his day in court. Dante Marks is charged with two counts of aggravated assault. Police say he allegedly shot two people last month in Cleveland. The victims are recovering after getting shot on Cypher Street. Marks is currently in the Bolivar County Regional Correctional Facility. A 34-year-old woman connected to a wire and computer fraud scheme is no longer in jail. Well, Farrah Randall is charged with one count of computer fraud and one count of wire fraud. Now, according to Mississippi Attorney General Jim Hood's office, Randall allegedly participated in a scheme to get about $54,000 in refunds from the Department of Revenue by filing false payments. Well, Randall was released from the Bolivar County Jail after posting a $5,000 bond, but if convicted of computer fraud, she faces up to 20 years in prison and $10,000 in fines. Downtown Itabina is getting ready for a major facelift thanks to a $200,000 dollar grant with WXVT's Denise Turner has the details. Eight or nine years I've been here and have to look at it every day. It'll be a great thing to have it cleaned up. Soon, Itabina residents may see a different downtown thanks to a planning grant. This grant is a $200,000 grant from EPA, which is Environmental Protection Agency, and it's primarily used for the purpose of revitalize, revitalizing the downtown area of Itabina. Revitalizing the community means knocking down dilapidated buildings like this one. Residents say they're thrilled about the future. Owning a business here, it, it, uh, the conditions that Itabina's in is bad, so any improvement is, is a blessing. The blessing begins with the planning team. The team, Mayor Collins says, finds out exactly what residents want, then create it. Now, we do have several site uh, areas that we have already identified, um, and those are the sites in the downtown area that we want to look at those sites to see how can they be reused. Those sites are vacant businesses located from Cleveland Street to Martin Luther King Jr. Drive and Main Street to Lakeshore Drive. It's good to see them trying to improve at Avena. Got a long ways to go. Calling all volunteers. Well, the Greenville Fire Department ne needs your help in installing smoke alarms. Firefighters plan on installing smoke alarms in several homes on April 23rd. Fire Chief Reuben Brown says the goal is to install at least 2,000 alarms to help keep residents in Greenville safe. The fire department is calling on volunteers from residents to civic organizations, fraternities, sororities, and churches. If you're interested in acting as a volunteer, call the Greenville Fire Department. That number is 662 Seven eight sixteen sixteen. 16 16 once again 662 378 16 16 and in business news if you're looking for a variety of jewelry then you might want to check out Lynn Bar Jewelers well Lynn Bars is Greenwood's oldest retail jeweler and a ribbon cutting ceremony was actually held yesterday morning to celebrate Lynn Bar's new location and that's at 209 Howard Street in downtown Greenwood well Lynn Bar has been serving the Mississippi Delta for more than 70 years well the store also offers service in custom design, engagement rings, and jewelry repair. We specialize a lot in custom design. I make a line of jewelry called Linnell B Designs. We do a lot of custom design wedding ring sets and take people's old jewelry and make new pieces. It's what we specialize in. 
Well, Tollison also says that Lynn Bar relocated right down the street from its old location simply to serve value customers in a larger space. And Amory, Mississippi's very own Trent Harmon is the 15th and final American Idol winner. Well, he was crowned last night, and 22-year-old LaPortia Renee from Macomb, Mississippi, was the runner-up. Now, before auditioning for the show, Harmon worked as a waiter at his family's restaurant. Well, the 25-year-old grew up on a farm and described himself simply as a dude from Mississippi. And today in history, on April 8th, back in 1979, well, Atlanta Braves player Hank Aaron breaks Babe Ruth's Major League Baseball record. Well, Aaron hit his 715th home run in a game against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Well, unfortunately, he actually received a number of death threats before and after surpassing Babe Ruth's record from people who were angry that a black man would achieve that milestone. Milestone. Well, Aaron played 23 seasons in a Major League Baseball, and this is all from 1954 to 1976. Let's take a look now at your morning Delta Chat question. What's the best pizza topping, Riley? Jalapenos. Jalapenos. That's pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> so leave a message on our Facebook page. Your comment will be read live on air. Thanks for participating. I love veggie pizza. Veggie pizzas. Yes. Very good. Our pineapple. Does ever, anyone out there like pineapple on their pizza? Pretty you sweet. You ever had the, it's called the hot Hawaiian. The hot Hawaiian. Pineapple and jalapeno. You are really into this jalapeno thing. Uh, it's good. It's like a sweet it's and spicy. It's too hot. I have to be comfortable when I'm eating my pizza. <laughs> have you ever had pizza with no cheese? Oh. Uh. I was attempting to be a, a vegan. Clearly, this was a long time ago, folks. <laughs> and I tried to eat pizza. And I was just like, well, it has cheese. You know, mm. vegans don't eat cheese. So I thought, okay, mm. I'll just try the pizza. No cheese. It tastes like I was just eating garlic bread. Which is good. <laughs> Which is good, true, but it's not pizza. Yeah. Dessert pizza doesn't have cheese. That's good. Dessert pizza? What does that consist of? You've never had dessert pizza no from, way. like, CC's or a Pizza Inn? <gasps> Oh, you know what? I have like the little cinnamon. Yeah. And oh my gosh, it's so good. Ones, now I'm yeah. getting really hungry. Okay, so we want to know what's your favorite topping. I think some people are going to just say plain old pepperoni. Yeah. I mean, it's classic though. It is, and it's really good. We want to hear your thoughts. Let us know. Riley, what's up with the weather? A little chilly this morning, a little bit cooler than yesterday into the upper 40s across the area. And we are going to continue that slightly cooler trend today. Highs will not be quite as warm as yesterday, about 10 degrees cooler actually. We're going to stay dry through the weekend, but it does look like by Sunday it is going to be a fairly windy day. Possibly could see some wind advisories issued. So I'll talk about that after the break. A couple of your photos. This one was a great shot out of money. This one sent in by Lamar Ashmore. Good sunrise there out of money. And then George Reynolds. This was sent out of Blackhawk. And good, good way to start the morning. Everything's starting to grow, starting to get warm again. Everything's getting green and a lot more, uh, or a lot less depressing out there with all that green out there. View your photos, go to Facebook or Twitter. Just make sure to include your name and location. Riley, did you enjoy gym class in high school? Yeah, gym was fun. Did you get a good grade in gym? I think so. I think I was able to pass. <laughs> it, was, it was tough, though. It's really bad if you don't get a good grade in gym. And I must admit, I, I, didn't, get a, I didn't get the best grade. I kept forgetting to bring my gym clothes. I was about to say, the only, the only way you don't pass gym <laughs> is if you don't my fashion sense, <laughs> my, my style. And I wasn't big on tennis shoes either. <laughs> I love sandals or heels. Yeah, heels don't really work for gym class, Candace. <laughs> can you imagine somebody yeah, trying to run? I can definitely <laughs> imagine you doing that. <laughs> Shame on me. Well, I'm just speaking about all of this because there's a new push to get more students in the gym, like Riley. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm down to go to the gym. <laughs> Do you go to the gym now? Yeah. I don't go to the gym. Riley, I need to start working out more. What's up with that? You should uh, join the Y. Great community right. organization. Yes, they just got a nice. new pool. I did see that. Yeah. I love the pool. But I don't want to wet my hair. I guess I can get the, yeah, get the shower the, cap. <laughs> get the the cap. shower cap? Yeah. We'll have to talk more about this <laughs> just between me and you during the break. We'll be right back. 